hören. Ich hoffe, du sitzt vielleicht oh. später. Oh! Oh! <lacht> Der zum Abschluss. <lacht> His first agent then was a Filipino businessman named Noni Ortega. It was believed that Efren earned over $10,000 in his first US hustling adventure. Unfortunately, Noni took off with his winnings and accused Efren of still owing him some money for food and other expenses he incurred during his stay in the US. He went back home but didn't lose heart. Efren had seen how other pool athletes had played and he knew that he stood a chance. He was confident that he'd be able to beat them. Yet another Filipino agent duped Efren before he found a decent one who was ironically American. The first non-American winner of the US Open 9-Ball Championship. It was his victory over Nick Varner that solidified his world-class status as an athlete. Due to his growing popularity, Puyat Sports decided to sponsor his games. Arsidio Puch Puyat feels a special kind of affinity to Efren saying that their now bankable empire was built by their grandfather from scratch. Helping Efren was like honoring their grandfather. Call it fate or destiny, but many believe that Efren was simply rewarded for his hard work and humble heart. Okay, what he's looking at here is following two rails, play straight in on the eight. I think any angle will suffice on the eight. You don't want to brush it. He's drawing back straight to the bottom pushing, and it looks like Efren Reyes. A major championship is going to be the U.S. Open. <laughs> you know, you really have to feel good. One of his most memorable performances was against Earl Strickland, his favorite opponent. The event was called Color of Money, and was inspired by the movie of the same title. He was challenged to play 120 matches of nine ball. The match was held in Hong Kong and $100,000 were at stake. It was a heart-stopping event, with Efren tipping onto the losing end on the second day of the match. On the third day, however, he was back with a vengeance. He regaled the audience with his unbelievable tricks, earning him the moniker, The Magician. Needless to say, Efren won the match 120 to 117. It wasn't only the $100,000 he took home, but also the respect of other pool players. I have to disagree. He wouldn't go through all this tirade. Efren yeah. Reyes wins it. He wins it. And I'm not going to say anything else, Mike. Way back, pool was purely a game of gambling. But after Efren displayed incredible stunts for the world to see, it gained a whole new reputation. Since Efren's legendary winning, more Filipinos became interested in pool, and pool halls began to mushroom. In 1999, Efren became the first winner of the televised match of WPA World Nine Ball Championship. When he came back to the Philippines, the whole nation was waiting to welcome their new hero. He was teary-eyed when he was interviewed upon his return, overwhelmed by the attention he was getting. Efren found a new inspiration in playing, realizing that he no longer plays only for the money, but also for the glory of his country. Efren became more determined to win every match he joined. For the title world champion, he's the king of the nine ball ring, Efren Batareyes. His cue raised in a victory salute. He'll be leaving Cardiff on cloud nine tonight. Efren was awarded the Presidential League of Honor in 2000, and eventually the Philippine Order of La Condula, the Champion for Life Award. His next overseas game was in Tokyo, where he beat Niels Feijen and took home $850,000 along with the International Billboard Tournament trophy. It was considered the biggest first prize in a pool tournament back then, but it was only the beginning of his long-running winning streak. Yes, I got a lot of fun on this game, you know, everybody, I think they like this game, because I, I, like, I like this too, everybody's happy.
Everybody, they make pressure to when you shoot. They, they, everybody, they ashamed to shoot. The following year, he went to beat Mika Imonen, one of the most distinguished players in the winner-take-all International Challenge of Champions. He was awarded $50,000 and topped the AZ Billiards money list for the second time. So, this is the So, this is the first time I've been that same year, he was named the Philippine Sports Writers Association Sportsman of the Year. Mainly due to his unbelievable skill in controlling the cue ball, he became the first Asian to be inducted into the Billiard Congress of America's Hall of Fame in 2003. The same year, he became the Mid-Atlantic Nine Ball Open champion. In 2004, he defeated Marlon Manilo and was declared the first ever WPA World 8 Ball champion making him the first player in WPA history to win both 9 and 8 ball world championships. He was inducted into the One Pocket Hall of Fame and again topped the AZ Billiards money list for the third time. His home country then appointed him Philippine Sports Ambassador for the Southeast Asian Games. Pairing with Francisco Django Bustamante, Efren and Earl Strickland would meet again during the World Cup of Pool in 2006. Having Francisco Django for a partner resulted in a win. The two conquered the title and defeated Team USA composed of Earl Strickland and Rodney Morris. More than the winnings, it was forming a friendship with a fellow Filipino that made it more fun for Efren. I think I heard Earl reaching for his car keys. Look well, at he, look, look at Earl. Yeah, <laughs> he can reach for him right? now. Hey. For the game and the match. Efren Reyes pockets the 8 ball in an 8 to 5 win over Earl Strickland. Efren would again be pitted against Rodney Morris in the IPT World Open 8 ball championship, that year where he won and was supposed to receive $500,000, earning him his fifth year as top pool player in the AZ Billiards money list. In spite of not being able to be paid in full right away, Efren did not sue the promoter, saying that he understands that they're in trouble. In any country, in the Philippines, Nothing short of a fortune. And this, the decisive ball. What a shot that was. What excitement. And finally, he could capture the title. 